Allegations have surfaced. The Florida State message board is abuzz with allegations that I lied and allegations that I, I think the thread title was rewrote history. Uh, like Mima said, allegations can only chase you if you run from them. So I'm here. I am the face of those allegations. Allegedly, they came from my mouth. And you don't have to just blindly accept the allegations. Because I, I sent director Colin and producer Jesse over to the 24-7 Sports FSU message board. And I said... Do some digging. What are they saying about me over there? I eventually made my way over there myself, and I've got to give it to you. It looks like you got me. So let's let's just summarize for the viewing public. If you're listening on podcast, I'll tell you what we're looking at. Here is a picture of the tweet. It first came to our attention from a tweeter out there. And if you can't tell what you're looking at, that's okay. Uh, We'll zoom in a little bit. The first picture that you need to see is a screen grab from a show we did probably in August. It's when we were doing ACC record predictions. And you see there, this is just a a zoomed-in view of what was in the tweet, the prediction on this show, from yours truly, from Miami, was for them to go 10-2. and Now, obviously they fell well short of that. People have been wrong on predictions before, right? Well, that's not where they thought they got me. Where they alleged to have got me is a very fresh show sound bites from just a couple of weeks ago we were talking about Miami on signing day and someone on the FSU message board took notice of me saying the following Miami let me ask you a question what did you expect from Mario Cristobal when he got to Miami I personally did not expect them to immediately compete for fill in the blank i I didn't expect them to get beat by the teams they got beat by last year. But the first thing I thought about when Mario went to Miami is, ooh, recruiting. So which is it, buddy? Are they going 10-2 and or do you expect nothing from them? Are they double-digit wins or are they not going to contend for anything? Now, does this make me look bad? Yes. Do I sound like a hypocrite? Absolutely. Am I going to try and wiggle my way out of this? You bet. Watch this. As you know, on this program, I notoriously hate predictions. Why? Because it it entraps you, and it can make you look stupid when you're wrong. And I don't like those sorts of situations. Classic fence-riding technique. And so, there is a long-standing rule on this program that when a prediction is right, I take the credit. And when a prediction is wrong, it was the model's fault. Famously, I fought the computer model that we use on this program when it comes to Texas all year. The computer model probably still thinks Texas should have been in the playoff. And I was just dismissing it at every turn. You're wrong, model. You're wrong. And so, as memory serves, Jesse, correct me, don't correct me if I'm wrong, actually. That's the opposite of what I'm trying to do here. But if memory serves, when we were in August, I had them, had the production team generate via graphic what the model thought the records would be of teams. And the model spat out 10-2 and two as the most likely record for Miami. For the record, its best case was 11-1, and one, and the worst case was 6-6. Six and six. So the model, model kind of went Texas A&M on us there. It, it was worse than the model's worst case scenario for Miami this year. Uh, do I take full responsibility? No. Do I take some responsibility? I guess, as Cheryl Crow would say. And Meemaw, if it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. But I gave no win projection. If you'll notice, even in the soundbite, Colin, can you you actually... No, I'm not going to ask you to do that again. But the soundbite that Colin just played, if you'll notice, I said I didn't expect them to contend for anything. And I think as history has shown us, and you're looking at Miami's schedule from this year right now, even if they went 10-2, and two, if the losses were to a couple of conference opponents, they probably still wouldn't have contended for anything. But in good faith, I will acknowledge that if you're predicting someone to go 10-2, and two, yes, you're probably expecting them to contend for something. The third excuse I would like to make for myself tonight, and make no mistake, that's absolutely what I'm doing, is stacking excuses so that hopefully the stack gets high enough that I can hide behind them. There's just a lot to remember. There's just a lot to remember. If you want to participate in an exercise with me, I would encourage you to do this. I want you to take like 50 things that you think about the 2023 season. And I want you to 
lick the pen there, and I want you to write them all down, and then I want you to wad them up and bury them in your backyard. And then I get to go dig them up, with your permission, of course, in December, and watch how frequently I read things off that piece of paper that you look at and scoff. I didn't say that. I didn't think that. Happens to me all the time. I just have the unfortunate task of being live here and getting it thrown in my face. That's the breaks. I signed up for it. I get it. So, yes, people, I was wrong. I made a very hypocritical statement about Miami, and I am here to cowardly wait until the end of the segment to take a stand, but take a stand nonetheless I am doing. Side note, and I mean this in all sincerity, it's good to have FSU fans back because you guys disappeared on me for a little while, and I wondered if we would ever reunite, but here we are, and it feels so good. All right, I've done my due diligence. That felt like community service to me, but I've done what I came here to do. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Make sure you like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Not just for me. That's how we keep this entire thing free.